Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at using VNAV for the purposes of flying an approach procedure. Now there's a bunch of different types of approaches out here, and this particular one we're going to be doing an arrival as opposed to an actual approach to landing. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, let's take a look at the approach that we're going to be trying out here today. This is called the Stella One Arrival. This is uh, taking us into Bradley International Airport, and you can tell right over here on the right that we're just about ready to cross Albany. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell our G1000 here that, hey, we would like to use this approach, and then we're going to arm the VNAV once we get in position so it actually flies the downward component of the approach. Keep in mind this approach itself, if you kind of look at it, you're going to see we're going to be basically trapped at 11,000 feet for a while, and then it's going to start dumping us downwards to about 9,000 feet. Let me cut this little one off right here, heading over to Barnes. So let's go ahead and get this all set up inside the computer. First thing I want to do is head over to my flight plan page. I just make sure everything's all set in here. And uh, one thing I notice is you can see that I don't have any information in here yet. Uh, the reason I don't is because I used a direct to for the purposes of my navigation here. If we try to do something like that, you're going to run into problems like that. So what I'm going to do is go over here to proc and I'll go ahead and select. We can do an approach, an arrival, or a departure. We're going to select ourselves an arrival. And we're going to go ahead and select the arrival that we want. Now, if you remember from the document we saw a minute ago, we're doing the Stella 1 approach. Then it's going to say, what original point would you like to use? In this case, since we're right about to fly over Albany, I'm going to go ahead and select the Albany position. So we're going to go ahead and, the, uh, go ahead and press the load button there, and it's going to load it into our little computer there. And you can see right now that all the different waypoints for it have been activated. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and activate this particular approach here. Come on down. We can actually we'll go ahead and get out of this one because I don't want this to get in my way too quick here. But what I do want to do is pop over to my flight plan and do double check to see if everything looks okay so far. Let's see. It looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Good. Perfect. Let's go ahead and head down to this one right here. We're going to head direct. We're going to press uh, looks good to me, and I'm going to press activate like that. And that will initialize our traditional approach here. So let's go ahead and unpause. We're up pretty high today, so I'll go ahead and let that thing kind of settle in to get ourselves all ready. Now, what you're going to notice is there's a bunch of VNAV coming along the side here. As a matter of fact, if you look at the VNAV information that's coming down, we can actually come in here if we wanted and change these individual values. Uh, for example, if air traffic control told us to go ahead and come down to 10,000 at Shiggy, we could actually go down here, scroll down using our options, and we could change this value right here. So come up to Shiggy, you'll give it a quick little wiggle. Let's say we want it to come down to 10,000 feet and press the enter key. Notice as soon as we do that, that's going to trigger this to change color, and you're also going to get this little pencil icon here to remind us that we've made an edit to our little process here. The other thing you're going to notice is our time of descent has shifted over here. Now I'm going to go ahead and cancel this one out. Now we're on approach now. Our first spot's right here. So if we come over on this side, you're going to notice that we've got this little magenta 10,000 here reminding us that this is going to be our new next target altitude. If I look at this though, you'll notice that my selected altitude is 11,000, which means the aircraft will not be able to descend until we select an altitude below or at this particular number here. So if I take a look at my little approach here, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down, kind of take a look through some of my options. I can see that all of these are about 10,000 feet. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and arbitrarily change a couple of these just to simulate what those original positions were. So we'll call this one 9,000. Uh, when we get down to molds, I'll go ahead and press enter. We'll call molds. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this one. I believe it was actually originally at or above 9,000. So we can go pretty low here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one. We'll call this 5,000. Looks pretty good. Press the enter key. Up. Oh, Notice that little arrow, it's giving us a warning. Remember that Tomes was originally 9,000, so we need an altitude below 5,000 for this to work. So I'll just come in here, I'll go ahead and select that. Let's call an arbitrary altitude of 5,000 as well. We'll kind of hold our altitude at that point. Then when we get to this one right here, we'll go ahead and select a much lower altitude once we arrive to Bradley. Let's say we want to do the traditional high altitude pattern altitude, which is about 1,800 feet. So press the enter key, and you can see we still have an error here. Uh, the warning here is, of course, reminding us that we should technically be descending here. So what we can do is we can either make this number a little smaller, or we can make this number a little bit bigger. Again, whatever air traffic control says goes, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it marginally larger. So I'm going to go ahead and looks pretty good. Press that one, and now we're perfect. So what the aircraft will now do is it's going to proceed direct to these targets and it's going to start descending in a total of six minutes. But in order for this to work, I have to dial in an altitude right away that is below the next target if I want it to actually do the descent on its own using the VNAV. So I'm going to come over here to the altitude option. I'm going to go ahead and drop this down to the 1800 feet. Theoretically, I could probably go a little bit lower. Let's go ahead and speed up time here. One, two, three. That should give us a pretty good boost to our time acceleration there. Now, some of you will say, can you just press VNAV now? Sure. Go ahead and press VNAV now. We're already at our correct selected altitude. So what's going to happen is you're going to get the VPATH warning, which is going to appear up here at the top. What's going to happen is when we get with one minute to go over in our time of descent, a little arrow is going to start dropping down from the top here, which is going to notify us that the VNAV system is about to kick in. 
remember, for this to work, we have to make sure we're going down and not trying to go up. And second of all, we need to make sure that our altitudes actually match whatever it is on that particular procedure. Like I said, we kind of went in and made some quick little changes in here. Now, if you're wondering why we're getting this uh, lovely little oscillation, uh, welcome to Flight Sim, by the way. Whenever you do serious time acceleration like this, you're going to get this kind of experience happening to you as well. So we'll go ahead and accelerate. One, two, three. We'll go ahead and drop back down to normal time here. Looks good. And you'll notice that we suddenly have this little diamond, this little carrot that's starting to make its way down to the center. As soon as this carrot hits this point, you're going to watch our vertical speed indicator start to actually change the desired vertical speed. And then we're going to capture whatever that particular altitude that we need to approach. Now, if you remember, we need to be at 10,000 when we hit the Shiggy intersection here. So when I zoom out a little bit, you'll notice this aircraft will try to hit 10,000 right as it crosses this. Now, the reason the VNAV is so powerful here is once you're in the system and VPath has been highlighted up here, you're good to go. You could actually basically use that VNAV to take you all the way down to the ground. But what I will do is speed up time a teeny tiny bit here. Actually, we can probably just watch it happen on its own. Got about eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. VPath is highlighted, which means VNAV is now in control of the aircraft. And note, our airspeed is gonna start creeping upwards because we never pulled our throttle back. Because we did that, it's not uncommon to get this thing going really, 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 really fast. So remember, you still have to fly that aspect of the plane. We don't have a three-axis autopilot where it's going to automatically control our speed for us. We'd have to get in like a citation or something to do that. But you can see, we're at 10,000 feet is our goal. 1,800 feet is our now our minimum. Notice you have the Alt-V here, which is just saying I'm on um, VNAV Control Alt. So once I hit that 10,000 feet, which should be just about simultaneous to when we bump into Shiggy, the aircraft will go ahead and level itself off automatically, and it'll kind of hang there until it realizes it needs to start its descent to its next altitude. So if you notice, as we're starting to get close to that 10,000, see how the aircraft is starting to pitch itself up? And also, if you take a look over here at Shiggy, you can see we are almost exactly going to be crossing that position exactly when the particular chart has asked us to do, and it's going to happen exactly automatically, where I have not had to interfere with anything. Now, as we get lower, obviously, we're going to have to do things like fits with our throttle. Obviously, I have to enrich in the mixture a little bit, play with my throttle so I don't go too fast, uh, things like cow flaps. You're still responsible for all that information. But for now, this aircraft is in control of my descent. Enjoy.